Uh, Peter Alders. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker, and welcome to your place. Uh, this bill is welcome as it can play a key role in delivering a cheaper, cleaner energy system, promoting investment in clean technologies, and enhancing our energy security by deploying more homegrown power. The UK has been a global leader in promoting renewables such as offshore wind, but we cannot rest on our laurels. If we do nothing, we shall be left behind in a race to attract global investment, which is very much footloose. The US's Inflation Reduction Act and the EU's Green Deal Industrial Plan very much throw down the gauntlet to which we must respond, not necessarily with like for like, but by ensuring that we have a regulatory and policy framework that gives investors confidence and certainty. At the same time, we must not forget the demand side. We should be doing better and we are still searching for that catalyst that will unleash a retrofit, retrofitting revolution. Madam Deputy Speaker, I shall briefly go through some of those initiatives and issues that are needed so as to provide the clarity and certainty that everyone is seeking. Firstly, there does need to be a duty on Ofgem to consider net zero. It is vital that we keep costs as low as possible for consumers, but expanding its remit to include net zero would unlock more anticipatory investment, which would enable grid reinforcement to be carried out. This is particularly important in East Anglia at the current time. Secondly, introducing a competitive market for major onshore electricity transmission networks is welcome and can deliver real consumer benefits by driving both innovation and downward pressure on costs. Thirdly, the establishment of an independent system operator and planner responsible for whole energy system strategic planning is a positive and welcome step towards, improved, towards an improved government governance framework. Fourthly, Madam Deputy Speaker, we need to remove those obstacles that currently block community energy schemes from realising their full potential, and thus I would urge the Government to give full consideration to retaining clauses 272 and 273, which were introduced as Lords' Amendments. One of the great challenges with transforming our energy system is that so many people and communities feel as if something is being done to them, that a burden is being imposed on them. Community energy schemes enable local people to be part of the solution, participating in the benefits and showing that, this, that we are all in this together. As we've heard, Madam Deputy Speaker, hydrogen will be critical to achieving net zero, and locally in East Anglia it has a key role to play. It is very much the new kid on the block. We do not yet know the precise role that it will play, and there, as we've heard, there is a dispute as to who will pay the hydrogen levy. Different views are being expressed on this particular issue, and it's necessary to consider very carefully how best to proceed. It's also important to send a strong signal to investors by introducing a sunset clause for the powers assigned by the Secretary of State in last year's Energy Prices Act. These powers have impacted on investor confidence, and companies are falling out and leaving the sector. The, this bill does provide an opportunity to amend the Energy Prices Act so as to enable the government to respond quickly in the short term without unnecessarily impacting on investor confidence in the long term. Moving on, Madam Deputy Speaker, and my final point is that it comes back to demand side measures and addressing the challenge presented by our leaky buildings. Clause 204 is a Lord's Amendment that gives the Secretary of State six months to publish a comprehensive plan to improve the UK building's, UK building's energy efficiency. And I would urge the Government to commit to doing this by, um, and provide firm policies to incentivise improvements across all building, domestic and commercial buildings. In conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, whilst there are many issues that the Government does need to clarify, it is vital, as Energy UK point out, that this bill is passed with, with the utmost haste. 
The pressing need for reasonably priced electricity, enhanced energy security, and meeting head on the challenge of climate change, together with the opportunity to create exciting and sustainable new jobs in constituencies and coastal communities like the one I represent, does mean that there is no time to delay. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Energy Bill is a critical piece.